Hello students, how are you all doing? I hope all of you are doing really well. So students, in this class, we are going to study the third part of the chapter, The Happy Prince. We have stopped at a very interesting point where the swallow decides to stay with the happy prince forever. He also knows that he will not be able to fight the cold weather of that place. But since the happy prince had gone blind, the swallow did not want to leave him alone and stay with him always. So let's see what happens now. Okay, students, so I'm sure all of you are really excited to know what the story has for us. So let's begin. All the next day, he sat on the prince's shoulder and told him stories of what he had seen in strange lands. So now the happy prince was not able to see, he had gone blind. So the swallow, he was telling him the stories of what he was able to see in strange lands. He sat on the happy prince's shoulder all the next day and he told him all the stories. Dear little swallow, said the prince, you tell me of the marvelous things, but more marvelous than anything is the suffering of men and women. So, prince is saying, little swallow, you tell me of marvelous things. But more marvelous than anything in this world is the suffering of men and women. How men and women suffer? There is no mystery. There is no mystery so great as misery. Fly over my city, little swallow, and tell me what you see there. So the prince is saying that there is no mystery so great as misery. That how people... They face challenges. They face struggle. So dear little swallow, fly over my city and tell me what you see there. Tell me, what are the misery of the people in my city? So the word mystery means something that is difficult to understand or explain. So he says, Happy Prince says that no mystery is, is as great as misery. And what is the meaning of misery? A state of feeling of great physical or mental distress or discomfort. Okay. So the swallow flew over the great city and saw the rich making merry in their beautiful houses while the beggars were sitting at the gates. So this is very common, you know, in every city. The rich people, you know, they are very happy. They merry means happy. They are making merry, which means they are happy. Beautiful houses, big, grand, beautiful houses rich people will have. While the beggars, they will sleep on the streets. They will not have food for three times to eat. And they have no fixed place to sleep. Sometimes they will sleep at the station. Other day they will sleep at some hut. Or they will, sleep at the, uh, they will be sitting at the gates. So this thing which we all can relate to, that there's a gap, there's a big gap between the two class of the society, the rich class and the poor class. The rich people, they're happy, they are making merry in the beautiful houses, while the beggars, the poor people, they are sitting at the gates. It's really sad. It's, it's really a great misery to know about. The swallow, we are talking about the swallow. He flew into dark lanes and saw the white faces of starving children looking out listlessly at the black streets. So the swallow flew into the dark lanes. Dark lanes because the people where poor, you know, the place where poor people live, the lanes are dark. They don't have electricity. It is very dark. And he saw the white faces of starving children. They are, they are hungry. They are starving. The children are starving. They are looking out listlessly, continuously at the black streets. So they are looking out at the black streets. They, they don't know who are going to come today to give them food. Under the archway 
of a bridge two little boys were lying in each other's arms to try and keep themselves warm so you can see what a pathetic situation that under the archway of a bridge the two little boys that they're, they're lying each in, each in each other's arm they're hugging each other because they don't have sweater they do they don't have warm clothes to keep themselves warm they're just hugging each other so that because of their body heat will transfer and they will feel warm this is the condition of poor people so you can see the archway archway is a curved structure forming a passage or entrance how hungry we are they said you must not lie here shouted the watchman and they wandered out into the rain so the children are saying to each other how hungry we are we don't have food we f- we are starving but then a watchman comes and shouts at them you must not lie here why are you lying here under the archway just leave go so see the treatment that poor people are getting they're not even allowed to sit under the archway this is the misery of the city and we can relate it to all the places this is very common and they wandered out into the rain so it was raining outside so maybe they were trying to keep themselves warm they were hiding under the archway so that they should they can be protected from the rain but no watchman did not even allow that they had to go out in the rain into the rain then he flew back and told the happy prince what he had seen i'm covered with fine gold said the prince so as soon as the swallow flew back he went to the prince and he told everything that this is these are the things that i have seen to this happy prince says i'm covered with fine gold so you can see the eyes of the happy prince is gone the swallow is talking to the prince he is telling him probably what he had seen you must take it off leaf by leaf and give it to the poor the living always think that gold can make them happy so when all the sapphire the ruby the gem everything was gone only thing which was left by the uh, with the with the prince was the gold his body was made up of fine uh, layers of gold leaf so he said that please take it off dear little swallow take the gold from my body leaf by leaf and give it to the poor because they always think that gold can make them happy so isn't it don't we think that gold can make us happy if someone comes and give you some gold you will be happy to take it because we know it's of great value okay let's see you can see the swallow bird sticking out leaf by leaf from his body leaf after leaf of the fine gold the swallow picked off till the happy prince looked quite dull and grey see how the happy prince has started to look after the gold was taken off from his body he's looking very dull looking very um, you know, not beautiful as he used to look before leaf after leaf of the fine gold he brought to the poor and the children's faces grew rosier and they laughed and played into the st- in the street so when they they received the gold they their faces grew rosier rosier means red they have been compared to rose they are happy so when they are happy they are smiling so the cheeks are glowing they have become red they are laughing and playing in the street you can see how the swallow bird is dropping the leaves of the gold from his beak we have bread now they cried then the snow came and after the snow came the frost so children started to cry we have bread now so why bread because it's not that the fine leaves are bread but they will sell the fine leaves of gold and they will receive some money and in t- and when they will receive the money they can sell it i mean they can buy the bread with it but after some time the snow came and after the snow came the frost you can see in this picture students the streets looked as if they were made of silver everybody went about in furs and the little swallow i mean sorry and the little boys 
wore scarlet caps and skated on the ice. The streets started to look as if they were made of silver. Why? Because of the snowfall. It was covered with uh, snow. It looked white. It looked as if they are made of silver. Everybody went about in furs. Furs are like, you know, those warm uh, sweaters. The little boys, they are wearing scarlet. Scarlet caps means red colored caps. And they were skating on the ice. They were enjoying. So, this is a situation. The poor little swallow grew colder and colder. But he would not leave the prince. He loved him too well. So it was. He was feeling very cold. He was. He was. He could not bear the, you know, uh, he could not bear the cold temperature of that place. But still, he did not fly to Egypt. He stayed with him. He stayed with the happy prince, because he loved him too much. You can see the snow is falling. Happy prince uh, and the swallow is shivering in the cold. He picked up crumbs outside the baker's door when the baker was not looking and tried to keep himself warm by flapping his wings. So for food, somehow he went out of the baker's shop and he picked up crumbs when the baker was not looking at him and he tried to keep himself warm by flapping his wings so that he can survive. You can see this is the baker's shop and snow is lying all around. Swallow has gone to pick up the crumbs when the baker was not looking at him. But at last he knew that he was going to die. He had just enough strength to fly up to the prince's shoulder once more. So he knew that he is going to die. He don't have so much of strength you know, to fight the cold. And he had only that much of strength that he could fly to the prince's shoulder just one time. Just one more time. So you can see he had reached up to the prince's shoulder. Goodbye, dear prince, he murmured. Will you let me kiss your hand? So he's saying that, will you let me kiss your hand? Goodbye. I am glad that you are going to Egypt at last, little swallow, said the prince. The prince is thinking that he is saying goodbye because he is going to Egypt. You have stayed too long here, but you must kiss me on the lips, for I love you. So he's saying that it's better that you are going to Egypt. You have stayed a long time with me. And before leaving, you can kiss me on the lips, because I love you. It is not to Egypt that I am going, said the swallow. I am going to the house of death. Death, death is the brother of sleep, is he not? So the swallow says, no, dear prince, I'm not going to Egypt. I'm going to the house of death. I'm going to die. And death is the brother of sleep. Is he not? He's asking a question. Is he not? Is, is not uh, sleep the brother of, uh, I mean, is not death the brother of sleep? And he kissed the happy prince on the lips and fell down dead at his feet. So as soon as he kissed the happy prince, he fell down dead. He was dead. And he fell down at his feet. You can see the bird is no more. The bird died. Because it was so much cold there that he could not survive. At that moment, a curious crack sounded inside the statue as if something had broken. So as soon as the bird died, there was a sound that came from the statue and that sound was if like something had broken. The fact is that the leaden heart had snapped right in two. It certainly was a dreadfully hard frost. So what happened? As soon as the bird was de uh, bird died, Prince's heart also broke. It broke into two pieces. So you can see the connection between the happy prince and the swallow. The bird was dead, the swallow, uh, I mean the happy prince died once again. His heart broke in two pieces. Early the next morning, the mayor was walking in the square below in company with the town councillors. So the mayor was walking, in company means along with. He was accompanied by the town councillors. 
As they passed the column, he looked up the statue. So they were passing the column on which the happy princess statue was established. So they looked up at the statue. This statue they're talking about. Dear me, how shabby the happy prince looks, he said. How shabby indeed, cried the town councillors. So they're saying that how shabby. Shabby means very dirty, very ugly. The happy prince is looking so dirty. How shabby indeed, cried the town councillors, who always agreed with the mayor and they went up to look at it. So whatever mayor says, the town councillors will agree and they will repeat. And they went to look at the happy prince. The ruby has fallen out of his sword. His eyes are gone and his golden no longer, said the mayor. In fact, he is little better than a beggar. So you can see the happy prince's statue was compared to a beggar. He's just saying he's a little better than a beggar. Not compared, but a better, but just a little better than a beggar. The ruby has gone, the eyes are gone, the sapphire has uh, the sapphire is gone, and his body is no longer golden. It's it's it has turned all grey. It's it's looking so shabby. Little better than a beggar, said the town councillors. So I told you they always repeated what the mayor said. And here is actually a dead bird at his feet, continued the mayor. We must really issue a proclamation that birds are not to be allowed to die here. And the town clerk made a note of the suggestion. So you can see what they are saying. That they will issue a proclamation, they will take out a notice that birds should not be allowed to come and die at the, at the column. So as if the birds will read a notice and they will decide, oh, we should not die here, it's not allowed. So they pulled down the, ha the statue of the happy prince. As he is no longer beautiful, he is no longer useful, said the art professor at the university. So basically the statue of the prince was kept there to beautify the place, to make it look more beautiful. So the art professor of the university says that he is no longer beautiful, so he is no longer useful. Let's just take down, pull it down. Then they melted the statue in a furnace. What a strange thing, said the overseer of the workmen at the foundry. So they found a, they have melt, first of all, they melted the statue of the happy prince in a furnace. And when they found something strange, the workmen of the foundry, they have found something strange. You can see in the fire, the body is being melted or the statue's body, happy prince's body was being melted at the furnace. You can see there's a heart of the happy prince. This broken lead heart will not melt in the furnace. We must throw it away. So as you know, the heart was made of puff, lead, metal lead. And you know, it's not easy to melt it. So they say, let us just throw it away. It's not going to melt. We'll throw the heart away. You can see they are talking. So they threw it on a dust heap where the dead swallow was also lying. So the, the heart went near the dead swallow. You can see, you can see how much they are connected. Even when they are dead, after being dead, they are still connected. The bird, the swallow is lying there dead. And the heart is also lying there. Bring me the two most precious thing in the city said God to one of his angels. You can see the God is talking to one of his angels. Bring me two most precious things in the city. And the angel brought him the leaden heart and the dead bird. And the angel went down and has brought the swallow bird and the broken heart. You have rightly chosen, said God. For in my garden of paradise, this little bird shall sing forever more. And in my city of gold, the happy prince shall praise me. So you can see at the end of the story, it's such a happy ending. God has taken the swallow bird and the heart of the happy prince. And he says, you have rightly chosen. In my garden of paradise, this little bird shall sing forever and the happy, will, happy prince will praise me. This was the 
this was the ending of the chapter you can see the swallow is singing and the happy prince is reading he is also alive he is doing some kind of work he is reading a book so uh, i really hope students that you have enjoyed this chapter it's such a you know we have to take away uh, so much of lessons from this chapter we have to learn that how we should we should have a heart of gold we should be ready to sacrifice for others happiness in today's day i don't see people who are you know giving in nature they just want to grab as much as they want and they want to take things from others but it takes a big heart to give away what you have the happy prince he gave away his gold he gave away his precious stones and swallow its little bird has taught us so much he has sacrificed his life for the sake of the others so we will discuss the question answers of the book first question is why do the courtiers call the happy call the prince the happy prince is he really happy what does he see all around him the first part why do the courtiers call him the happy prince the courtiers used to call him the happy prince because he was alive. when he was alive he did not know what tears were for he lived in the palace where sorrow was not allowed to enter but was he really happy the question is was he really happy he was not really happy and his heart ached for the needy people he saw the miserable conditions of people living in his city second question why does the happy prince set a ruby for the seamstress what does the swallow do in the seamstress's house the answer is the happy prince sends a ruby for the seamstress because he was because she was poor and her son was ill with fever her son asks her to give him oranges but she was so poor that she could not buy oranges for him the swallow came to the poor's woman, poor woman's house and laid the ruby on the table beside her thimble okay the bird fanned the boy's forehead with wings and flew back to the happy prince this is what he did in the seamstress house next question for whom does the prince send the sapphires and why i hope all of you know he sends sapphires for two person right the prince sent sapphire of his uh, two sapphires of his eyes for a young writer and a match girl the young writer was trying to finish a play for the director of the theater but he was too cold to write any more the prince sent the sapphires for the playwright so that he could sell the sapphire and finish his play on time and why to the match girl the match girl's matches fell in the gutter and got spoiled she was crying as her father would beat her for this the happy prince sent her the sapphire to her so that she would not get beaten up when her father sees what precious thing she has got right okay next question what does the swallow see when it was flying over the city the swallow saw all categories of people he found the rich making merry in their beautiful houses and beggars begging sitting at the gates he also saw a group of wandering children who were poverty stricken right they were hugging each other to keep themselves warm do you remember yes next question why did the swallow not leave the prince and go to egypt the swallow did not leave the prince and go to egypt because the prince had become blind after giving away his sapphires to the needy people the swallow decided to stay with the prince as he was very much touched with his kindness and would not leave him alone okay next question what are the precious things mentioned in the story and why are they precious so it's a very important question the precious things mentioned in the story are the leaden heart of the happy prince and the dead bird isn't it the god asks the angel to bring two important things precious things they were the leaden heart and the dead bird they are precious as they did various deeds for the welfare of people and sacrificed their lives for the sake of others 
So students, this was the end of the chapter. I hope you have understood the chapter thoroughly and you have also learned a lot of good things from this chapter. So students, I hope to see you in the next class. Till then, bye and take care of yourselves.